and it came out on him. And now Michigan's got a chance to win it in double overtime. They missed their opportunity in overtime to win. Seven seconds. Horton with Carter on it. Five on the clock. Trying to leave it for somebody else. Harris, fatally three. Got it! He hit it! Michigan wins in double overtime! The officials, I think, are telling Tommy Anika they want to go look at the clock. They want to go look at the monitor first to see. And I think Mike Gray thinks it was in plenty of time. They're going to look, but I think it was good as we called it live. But let's take another look. You never know. It was that close. I know there was only about a second and a half when Horton gave it up to Harris, so it's not a lot of time to get a shot. There's the pass with a second oh, left. Yeah. He got it away. Bob, it's good. Plenty of time. An unbelievable victory. The officials rule it as well. What a terrific shot. Guy running at him, fading away. Plenty of time, as you can see on the replay. And once again, Michigan finds a way to win in the NIT in this building, and Notre Dame finds a way to lose in unlikely fashion the story of most of their season. And two old friends have already hugged once. They shake hands again, and Mike Gray's got to just laugh and say, that's the way my season has been. He and Tommy Amaker, longtime friends and longtime assistants at Duke, now running their own programs, and both these teams played their guts out tonight. <laughs> what a way to end it. 87 to 84 in double overtime. Michigan wins. The number one seed advances to meet the winner of the Miami Creighton game. Hofstra has already beaten St. Joe's. That was in overtime. And the rest you'll have to wait for on Sports Center to see who won and who lost. Well, baseball is next. The World Baseball Classic Championship, Japan and Cuba. They've already been playing right now for Bob Valvano and our entire ESPN crew. Brad Nessler in double overtime. Michigan goes on in the NIT. Good night from Ann Arbor.